Hi, hello, howdy, how are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing pretty good. Um, we'll be honest, past couple weeks, yeah, past couple months have been rough. You know how it is when school starts, you get busy, you get exhausted, you get tired, you're stressed, all of the emotions. Oh, did I introduce myself? I should probably do that because I did get some new subscribers. Hi, I am Aspasia. Hey, God, I'm all over the place. This is a mess. This is a mess. A hot mess. Anyways, like I said, so we're going to be doing August TBR. For this month, I'm going to try to read 10-ish books. And I feel like that was like the best um, number to reach for just because of all the things I'm trying to read. So I have some for book clubs. I have some books for Libby that are coming in. I have some neck alley books I'm going to get through. So I'm trying to like completely finish that by the end of the year. Um, I have some Kindle Limited books I want to get through. I have some books on my physical shelf. What do I want to start with first? Let's do Neck Alley first. So the first one I have here is One for All. Um, this was described as a feminist retelling that features a girl with chronic illness, POTS. It really gives me Galofer Girl, if you remember that series, vibes. So from my understanding, um, I think her father is killed and that mystery is never solved and she ends up going to this school because her dad and his dad wish really want her to finish school so she goes to this school and she finds out this school is actually like a spy school so she's learning how to like spy and be secretive and seductive and get answers and do all that kind of stuff you know how it is and um in the process she ends up on this mission i guess her new target is this guy but like her target obviously this guy she finds cute but also she realizes that he might know more about her father's death than he lets on, or at least he might be associated with the event. And then she's struggling with trying to keep her loyalties to her family, because, you know, because her family. You know, she wants to find out what happened to her father. But she also wants to get the target and the job done. So it's like, do I like this dude or do I do my job? So it sounds very fun. I'm really excited to read it. I've been hearing some good reviews, so I need to get on to it. I'm going to not gonna read any more good reviews after that because i don't want to spoil myself i don't want to know too much what i've heard is enough and it sounds good i have learned that if i read too many reviews and i read too many descriptions i get an expectation or an assumption of what the book is going to be and when i get into it and it's not that i'm like what is this the kelly book i have is dangerous play uh this is about a girl who's on a sports team i think they're doing really well i think she ends up going to a party she ends up being sexually assaulted and she does not want any more women to feel the way that she felt but um so i think her and her sports team all girls create this group where they teach and help women to have that strength and empower themselves and fight back and all that it's giving me big moxie vibes if you've read that book or movie you know what i'm talking about but it's giving me vibes of that sounds really good that's all i need to know i'm gonna read that soon hopefully this month it's been on my tbr for like four months straight I just keep pushing it off because I'm a mood reader and I procrastinate. You know how that is. The next book I have is Long Story Short. This is... Ooh, was I... This is the one I always forget the description about. I believe this one is like a young adult book. And this girl is being told by her parents to like do something with your life. I think over the summer, maybe like a camp or something. Like go out, do something other than reading books. Now, listen, there's nothing wrong with books. But sometimes, I have to agree, I do spend all my life reading books and don't do anything else. So I can see why her parents are like, live your life. But also like, why do you have to attack us like that? Anyways, so she starts hanging out with some new friends and doing a lot of new things over the summer. You know, you do when you start doing things, she makes new friends. Um, some of these friends may or may not be the best influence on her. And she may or may not be having a good time, but I think she is also learning a bit more about herself, what she likes to do, and who she is outside of reading books. Um, also, because that's that period of time in high school towards college when you're trying to figure out what you want to do, who you want to be, how you want to take things. So I'm assuming that's going to be a little bit of coming of age kind of thing going on there. So that's also on my list. Then um, I wrote down for Kindle Limited, I wrote an author instead of a title, and that is Candy Steiner. I have been reading her books for the past six seven months i found her over tiktok and i've kind of been obsessed with her since i've been trying to read her backlist but um i have a couple of her books on my tbr from kindle limited so i want to read at least one or two um i haven't really decided which one is gonna be first they all sound pretty good just one of those we'll see i don't know which one but one of them 
All right, so the next book from Kindle Limited is going to be Gray Hair Don't Care. Um, this is about a woman who's, I think, in her 40s, which is very interesting. Um, I don't think I read very many books with main characters that are um, in their 40s and above. Off the time, that's when there's an age gap romance, and that's pretty much it. But, um, you know, she has started doing things after her divorce. Because, you know, some people typically, when they divorce, need time to kind of be on their own before they start going out and being in the dating world again. And I think she ends up having a one-night stand with, like, her high school, maybe college crush. And she tells him how she feels, like, oh, I'm in love with you, blah, 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 kind of in the spur of the moment kind of thing. He's like, fuck this shit, I'm out. Mm -mm. He falls asleep, so he disappears, and they don't talk for, I think said three years in the, in the description. And they end up running into each other again because his daughter is running a business that happens to be in the same field of interest that the female main character works in. Is it his daughter or his niece? Ooh, what if it's his niece? Oh gosh, I don't know about because one of the books that I read has a niece and one of them has a daughter. Oh no. I don't remember. Someone in his family. So they end up being put together and I'm assuming that now she, you know, he left her and goes to her and, you know, she's probably like, hmm, who needs men? <laughs> you had your chance. Krypton had its chance. You destroyed Krypton! Krypton had its chance! I'm sorry, every time I think about you had a chance, I think of Krypton had its chance. So I'm gonna put that clip in here because I think it's funny. I'm very interested to see what happens because I don't read a lot of books with older main characters. Also, I really love this cover illustrator. I think it's Lenny Kaufman. Um, I follow them on Instagram and almost every single cover they create, I have added to my TBR. The next one is Libby Books. Some of them are due this week. First one is Bet On It. You don't know what it's about. It just looked really cute and I wanted an audiobook to read, so I grabbed it. That is literally it. The next one is Accidental Pinup. This is about a woman who does boudoir. I think I used to pronounce that. Photography and her best friend is releasing a lingerie line. So they decided to collaborate where she does the photos for the modeling and the lingerie for her company. But if something happens with her friend and finds out she's pregnant and then so she can no longer do modeling and if someone else can't do the model so now the photographer ends up being the model and so they bring an alternative photographer who is a rival guy who she's not really sure how she feels about being you know exposed and intimate and looking sexy in front of him sounds good to me i'm ready to read it i think that's also an audiobook then I have Breathe and Count Back from 10. So Breathe and Count Back from 10 follows a Peruvian American teenager who has a disability called hip dysplasia and she is auditioning to become a mermaid at a theme park in Florida. She's also trying to figure out life with her first real boyfriend and also trying to feel safe and comfortable in her body and adjusting to her disability while doing more things with her life. Again, it's a very vague description. I don't want to know nothing else. All I heard was she has a chronic illness and or disability and I was like, put on hold. All right, so now I have book club books. There's only one, but the one I will be participating in is Chick List of Shit. But that is hosted by Julia on Instagram and the virtual events are through Zoom. So the month of August, as far as I know, there's only one event scheduled and that is No Funny Business. This follows two comedians I think one is like in his peak of his career and the other one is like she's struggling a bit so for her to get this job position audition that she wants she has to go on a country road tour with the guy who's like in his peak of his career and so i'm assuming that's going to be like road tour road trip trope close proximity trope maybe rivalry trope if they don't like each other because they're in the same industry i'm nervous because i don't think i read a book with a comedian character and I feel like if you're gonna do comedians the book needs to be funny like all the way through I need to be but not laughing I feel like a lot of books now they just have jokes in them so you do laugh because some people are funny but if you're gonna have comedians in there I need to be howling so if I'm not laughing in this book you're gonna have to fight
Oh, brother, this guy stinks! Alright, so that is my book club books. Now, I think my last ones are books on my physical shelf. Okay, so I have four. They're all kind of in the same color scheme. Look how pretty. So the first one is Talk Free to Me. I've already started this. I'm like page six this is um following this girl who does like a audiobooks um narration so she's like an audiobook narrator and she gets one that could really like kickstart her career really boost her job make her look great on her resume and it's a um rated r erotica romance she gets help from her brother's best friend and the issue with that is they have to do it together so he's going to be the male main character that the her character is going to be smashing throughout the book, which is going to be very interesting because you're sitting there probably in the same room discussing intimate moments of a character, but with him who's the character, you know? As of right now, they have met. They ran into each other at a bar. They're having this weird, like... I hate you but you're my friend banter almost like best friends do like where they're mean to each other they teach each other but they're friends so that is probably the first one i'll read these are our potentials will i actually read these i don't know because everything else that i've already mentioned today priority the first one is teach me which is by livia day this is follows two teachers one who's newer to this school and one who has been at this school for years um the one that has been here for years named rose and she's also a older woman and then Martin is divorced, who has recently moved to this area because he wants to stay around his daughter to continue with the relationship with his daughter. So in this school, they're in a tight, tight moment. Um, teachers are teaching out of closets. They're teaching in the cafeteria. Some teachers have to share classrooms. People are giving up their planning periods so that teachers can come in and teach in there. And obviously, Martin is the one coming in that's kind of taking over Rose's classroom because, you know, it's his job. He needs the classroom. But, like, when it, it's kind of annoying having someone else in your space, but it's also, like, it's his job. She's a bit apprehensive, hesitant about it because she's not really sure if that's what she wants to do. I mean, she likes him. But she's scared to hurt him. Also, um, she has some suspicious employees who like to talk. And has something to say about everything she does. So she pursues a relationship with him. They're going to open their mouth and say some things to her and him. And she doesn't really want to get him hurt. So she's kind of like, I don't know. But she's, you know, hesitant. And he's trying to prove to her that, you know, he doesn't care. That he cares about her. That he wants to do this. Like, let's do it. I have given all of the Dade's books that I've read so far four to five star ratings. I don't think I've ever been lower than that. So I can see this one definitely being out there. Next one is Set On You by Amy Lee. This is a firefighter and curvy fitness influencer romance. Um, I got my mind set on you. I got my mind set on you. Um, they have like a little rivalry in the gym because they're kind of fighting over certain equipment. And then they see each other at a wedding party because someone in her family is marrying someone in his family, which they didn't know about prior to this, of course. And so I think at this wedding, they realize that there's more to the person that they were fighting with and also like they actually kind of like them so sparks fly i'm assuming some kind of romance happens i'm assuming there's gonna be more wedding events that they end up having to go to because you know how it is with weddings the rehearsal the engagement party the bachelorette party then this then this so you end up seeing each other probably more than once but also they share the same gym so and the last of this shelf collection and the last of this whole video is the Bone Spindle by Leslie Vetter. This is a Sleeping Beauty retelling. Um, we have a girl who's like the treasure hunter, makes maps, reads the books. Then we have the girl who's super strong. And then we have Sleeping Beauty who's the guy, gender bent retelling. Um, I think she pricks her finger on some spindle or thorn, which links the Sleeping Beauty prince soul to her. So they hear each other's thoughts and stuff. And they have to break the curse to wake him up and help save the kingdom. And I'm a little confused on how the romance works because it sounds like she ends up with a prince. But I'm like, why not be with her? You know? She's right there. <laughs> I don't know what to read first. Probably going to read all my current reads and Libby books first just because those are... 
do something really quick because more stuff get flung off my shelf. So as I was saying, um, I'm probably going to read the Libby books first just because those are already available to me. I already have access to them and they are due within the next couple of days to the next couple of weeks. Um, plus I already started a couple of them. So with that being said, um, let me know what you're planning to read in August. Let me know if you've read any of these books and what your thoughts are on them. If you made it this far, drop a... What's, what's a good emoji for August? Um, maybe drop some like birthday related emojis because my birthday month is August. So drop some of those down below. And with that being said, um, have a good day, good night, good evening, good morning, whatever time it is where you are. And I'll see you in the next one.